In my last video, we talked about um, Kali Linux, uh, how to install uh, BTRFS file system to enable a snapshot feature in Kali Linux. And we also demonstrated a snapshot feature installing traceroute command, and then we rolled back using the same snapshot. So today I'm going to talk about some of the steps that um, you should follow before installing Linux and after installing any Linux distribution. So when you download a file, ISO from, from Kali's website or Red Hat or Ubuntu, CentOS, any website, usually they will give you um, checksum. It's a hashed information from the file that they generate and they will give it to you. And when you download the ISO, you can do the same. You can generate a checksum from that ISO file and see if it matches. If it matches, then your download was good. It was not corrupted or tampered in the, in the middle, commonly known as a man in the middle attack. And if it's not matched, then you should avoid installing that software because it may be corrupted or somebody just uh, put uh, malicious code in that software and then you just don't want to install it in that computer. So the first step I will always do when I download ISO is I um, perform the checksum and um, you can do on Windows and Linux machine. They both provide built-in tool to do the checksum error. So let's go and see how we can do it on the Linux Kali. They just released um, 2021 first quarter release. So they provided um, 256, SHA 256 checksum information here. Let me paste that into the notepad so I can make it bigger. Okay, now we are going into, and I just downloaded this file, four gigabyte file onto my hard drive. So on Windows, you can go to the command prompt and type cert util dash as file, then give the location of file. Twenty twenty one, and then SHA two fifty six because that was the hash algorithm used on that ISO file. It might take a few seconds. So if the result uh, comes the same as this has information, then our download is good. Um, it's a it's a good practice to do every time, but especially if you're downloading from the mirror website, uh, and uh, more important, if those uh, mirror websites are not encrypting the session. So looks like our result came back. I'm not going to read all, but it looks like it's a match. Two five two six five eight one two BC and the ending with seven zero four DE. So yeah, so it's a, the hash match. So the, we can confirm that the downloaded software is good and is not corrupted or tampered with. So let me exit out of it and close this. You do not need to see it. And you can perform the same test on either Red Hat or let's see if I have a file. Okay, let me do the quick uh, test here. SHA 256 sum history. So this is the 250, SHA 256 sum for this file. And similarly, we can run the same command. Let's see, I can do sudo SHA 256 sum history file, same command. And this is the hash information, 256, SHA 256, also known as SHA 2. So that's uh, one of the first uh, step that you should do. And the next step would be um, whether you're using on bare metal install or using hypervisor, either VMware workstation or virtual box, uh, you just need to make sure that uh, resources are allocated properly, especially if you're running multiple VMs, in the same machine. Um, I also talked this briefly on my previous video. Uh, 
the virtual box manager is a free software and lets you run multiple VMs at the same time. But uh, VMware Workstation Player free version does not allow you to run multiple VM at the same time. It only allows you to run one VM, but you can pay for the license and then you can run multiple VMs. So just check the resources allocated properly. If you're using graphics, then maybe it makes sense to have more video memory and then processors and uh, RAM and, and this space. And um, if um, for some reason you have to expand the disk later, um, I'll create a separate video. Maybe my next video will be about the disk extension and we can talk about that then. So after those, those pre-installation steps, then we'll just go ahead and perform the installation, which is fairly easy. With the graphical user interface, everything is a widget-based installation. So installation is pretty easy, nothing, to, nothing much there. And after installation, I would like to point a couple of things, um, both in Kali Linux and Red Hat. The similar stuff uses uh, maybe slightly different command, but um, uh, after installation, the first thing I want to do is uh, make sure all the ports uh, that you necessarily do not need are blocked or not opened. And uh, just make sure everything is up to date, all the packages, libraries, and dependencies, so you are patched and secure. Kali Linux, uh, by default, uh, blocks all the network-related ports. They do not want to listen on those public ports, uh, they want to be anonymous when they are performing ethical hacking or penetration testing. You can enable using systemctl command. By default, uh, we can verify that, for example, SSS port, I'm sorry, by default, SSS program is not active. And then you can start if you want to. And now it's active and running. And if you want to enable it during the startup process, you just have to supply enable command. And uh, next step would be updating your repositories and updating your system. And for that um, on, uh, well, one thing I, um, I forgot to mention, when you install Kali Linux, by default, root user is disabled. Uh, before um, 2018, 19, until 2018 and 2019, they had, uh, they had a root account enabled when you install the Kali Linux. They will ask you to change the password if you want to, or the default password is um, backward of the root, T-O-R. But starting 2020, uh, they are not, doing that. So they are disabling the root account by default. They will just give you one administrative account, which you can use to perform root uh, level access by using sudo command. Sudo stands for super user do. All other distributions, uh, almost all distributions, they allow you to create a root user, have a password, and then they will allow you to have a secondary administrative password, administrative account. But Kali Linux by default disables the root access right after the installation. But you can enable it. Let's check. So if you do su hyphen switch user hyphen, usually it goes to root access. So if I do the same thing on my Red Hat, and I supply the root password, so I'm on the root. Can also verify by looking at the etc passwd file and etc setup file. So if we look at those files on Kali Linux, let's do both at the same time. Can you clear the screen so that it will be? Filter the root.
So the root, um, notice how there's exclamation here. So that means this account is locked. It's on the etc setup file. This is the, that is the file where it, in, it stores the password information. If I check my user, see I have the password here. It is salted password, which we'll talk about in different videos. But in case of root, there's exclamation. That means the account is locked. So to enable it, just do sudo su hyphen. And then um, now I'm in the root. And then you can do passwd. So it's asking to create a password for the root now. And the password updated successfully. Now, if I exit out of it and then go to the same command, now the root has the exclamation field has the password now. And if I do switch user now, it's asking for the root password. And now I'm in the root uh, mode. So just be careful when you are operating in the root uh, level, because uh, when you if you delete something, system files, it will not even ask. It will just delete it. And then when you restart, then you'll have problem loading the operating system. So you just have to be a little careful. I always try to run on administrative user and then just run the sudo command whenever I need root level access. That would be the good practice. And the next step would be updating your repository. So let's go ahead and use sudo apt get update command. This command will just update the repositories for Galerina. Now the next command would be to actually upgrade the system. And here it's it's asking me, do you want to continue? If I say yes, it will continue. But let, let me say no, because I want to show you something here. So if you, inst instead of that, let me clear this screen. So if you say, hyphen Y here, it will automatically take yes from, from the Y switch. So you don't have to click uh, Y. If let's say you started, you wrote a small script to update and then you walk out of your desk and you don't have to enter Y. It'll just take automatically. And then this is the same command for Ubuntu because that's also a Debian distribution. If you want to do on CentOS or Red Hat Enterprise Linux, then it will be sudo um, update to update the repositories. Yum is the package manager for this. Okay, yes. And when you install using apt-get or yum, it will usually install a dependencies file also. Okay, so this is done. Let's see on the Red Hat, also done. So sudo yum to remove, trying to remove the unwanted dependencies file. Same here. And then auto clean. Uh, one thing you could do if you want to regularly perform these um, updates and cleanup, uh, you can write uh, one small script and run this script from here run those updates from the script. And you can, so and this ampersand ampersand sign will um, execute another command after this auto clean is finished. You can also do notify send 
update is completed. So what it does, this command is it will give you notification when the update, uh, when the update is done. The X will do quit and write, write and quit. I'll do one full session for the VI editor. So now just run assets, update, slash asset. And then here on the side, when it's done, you shouldn't be, see, update is completed. So we just checked everything was updated, so it didn't take a long time. And it just, um, you can also schedule using cron-d. That's a scheduler for Linux. One thing we could do is hyphen Y here. And pretty much that's it. So just a few pre-installation and few important post-installation steps and you should be ready to use Linux. Um, I hope this uh, video was helpful to you and uh, I'll see you in the next video.